Wow, wow, wow. My brother, freaking genius. Hello everybody, welcome back. It's me, Rosalie. Welcome to the Ultimate World Music Reaction Channel, all about music and psychology, philosophy, anthropology, all the ologies. <laughs> I'm really happy that you're here. So what are we going to do today? I got lots, lots and lots to share with you over the next several days and weeks. Good news, guys. I'm going to be opening up request and suggestion options on Buy Me A Coffee again. Yay! Of course, you're always welcome just to buy coffees and become a patron just to support. I'm grateful for it. It allows me to keep doing this. Um, but if you want to make a suggestion, make sure to read the instructions. I've made some changes to allow for a more reasonable workflow and to be more efficient and make it more feasible for myself to bring you awesome content. Thank you so much for your support. If you're a band or an artist, or you know someone who's looking for some promo, I got special packages and information available for you. Check out the email address in my about section here on YouTube, or pass it along and reach out to me and we'll talk and see how I can help you promote your band and your business. I got a couple of channels and uh, my, my wish is to promote and support artists from around the world. Let's get straight to it. I'm excited to check something else out by Dax today. We're gonna check out depression. Shout out today goes to John. Thank you for your request and your patience. I was asked to check out this song by Dax, Depression. Several of you have actually asked about it as well and um, have made various suggestions when it comes to work that Dax has made. I ended up using his, I ended up choosing his song To Be A Man as my first introduction into the world of Dax, which was unique because I know he's a rapper, but in that song, he was singing and had much more of a country flair, but it was a fantastic song. Check out that reaction. Check out his original work. It's been blowing up, and from what I can tell, it's really resonating with many of you, especially the men out there. I think it's a powerful song we all should be listening to, both men and women, especially us women, to gain more insight into the world of men. But we're going to check out Depression, the official music video. 12 million views put out six months ago. Now, that title alone is interesting to me because you know we're all about music and psychology here. And so it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. We all are familiar with the word depression and what it stands for. It's a word that is frequently used if someone is downcast, if someone is feeling sad and hopeless. But depression is actually a, a disorder. It's beyond just, oh, I feel depressed, I'm sad, right? We may use that casually, nonchalantly, if we're feeling very sad. But depression, true depression, those who have been diagnosed with it, who struggle and suffer from it, they um, struggle with this disorder that comes with a lot of heavy feelings and moods, feelings of hopelessness, a persistent feeling of sadness. And that word in itself, I think, speaks volumes. When something is persistent and it steals your joy, you lose interest in day-to-day -day life activities, it can be very severe. It requires a medical diagnosis, official depression, and it can be so severe that it leads people to hurt themselves or to want to end their life. So it's something very heavy. And I'm interested in to see what Dax does here because from what I've seen, even with just looking at one song of his, To Be a Man, I'm noticing that he is not afraid to talk about heavy stuff and yeah, d dives deep. So let's check it out. I'm going to start over. Those two items in this music video already are powerful. Being on a boat in a storm, screaming out loud, right? Chaos, storm, lost at sea, despair, agony, and then switching to 48 hours earlier, him waking up in bed with a, a, a sigh, with a feeling of, that's what I'm perceiving here, this feeling of just, I got to get up again. I got to do this again. No desire to get up out of bed. I don't know if you've ever experienced that. Those of you who have experienced that, can speak on that in the comments. Those of you who have been diagnosed with depression, you know about this all too well. So that in itself is already very fitting to the topic. Let's start over. And I love that intro, the chord progression with the guitar.
I can't find myself I get lost inside my brain Think I might need help Oh, snap. I promise I'm not going to keep pausing. Y'all know I don't like doing that much. I prefer to just embrace it and then talk. But I need to say so I don't forget. I can't find myself. It has a very similar vibe to the intro, the first couple of stanzas, the first couple of phrases of To Be A Man. But that's a very interesting um, note compilation here that is similar to To Be A Man in the introduction. And his singing voice is dope. I mean, come on. As a rapper... And these beats he brings in. I love it. All right, this is the last time I'm going to start over, I promise. That electric guitar. That's nice. I can't find myself. I get lost inside my brain. Think I might need help. But I pushed all them away. I took the cars they dealt. And there's nothing I can change. So when I'm by myself, I Come just on. pray for brighter days. Sometimes I sit and I reminisce about the good times Wish I could get those back I keep on running these races that go in my mind Then they go on these tracks I'm not ready to erase all my memories mm, I fight depression and I let it get the best of me I need notes. Give me a second. Now there's nowhere to run, nowhere to go Look around, there's liquor bottles all on the floor Filling up the space inside my heart and my home Drowning oh. out these thoughts until they leave me alone I can't find myself I get lost inside my brain Think I might need help But I pushed all them away I took the cards they dealt And there's nothing I can change So when I'm by myself I just pray for brighter days These thoughts are draining all my energy I try to tell them the God They said I'm going insane And then they recommended therapy And I go and talk to a man Who's getting paid to explain He started saying that the chemical imbalance Is the reason that my brain ain't connecting To accomplishments associated with moving on in life And past the things that my heart cannot contain So the happiness won't sustain And he read me my options he said, here goes a pill, only take two eat a meal, and it'll numb how I feel. Oh. I can't find myself. I get lost inside my brain. Think I might need help. So good. But I pushed all of them away. I took the cards they dealt. And there's nothing I can change. So when I'm by myself. Pray for brighter days. Should I drown all these thoughts or should I leave them to float? I've got all of my flaws living inside of this boat. I've been anchored in pain, the weight is making me choke. It's getting harder to breathe, it's pulling right at my throat. I've been hoping for change, but don't know how to restart. They say you ain't a man when you're exposing your heart. Then they oh. say you insane until it tears you apart. And then it cuts you so deep and they can tell by the scars. We can only see change when we accept who we are. Try to run from the shame and you won't never get far Don't you bottle the pain and live your life in the dark You're meant to break from those chains and shine as bright as yes. a star Don't you ever tell yourself that your depression is the reason you won't make it All that happiness yes. is not in your cards With our yes. God you can beat all the odds Keep your faith and you'll never be lost and say I, I can't, can't find myself Come on brother I get lost inside my brain But I pushed up them away. I took the cards they dealt. Come on. And there's nothing I can change. So when I'm by myself, I just pray for brighter days. Come on. 
Wow, wow, wow. My brother, freaking genius. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What is that movie called? It's the Truman Show, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, you guys. I know for a fact you can relate to this. I know there are so many out there of you who, when we spoke about High Ren and that battle inside between life and death, darkness and light, hope and despair, the battlefield of the mind, mental health, physical health, so many of you expressed a frustration with the health industry, even when it comes to therapy and counseling and therapists. I know many have this apprehension the second they hear therapist or counseling or psychology. And I understand more and more, even when I was in college getting my education and masters, my master's in counseling psychology, there were times where I would talk to a friend and I remember them expressing this concern that I was psychoanalyzing them, even though I was not. I might have just been listening or whatnot. And there were times where maybe I was trying to apply what I was learning. But there's this apprehension in human beings, understandably so, when someone is interested in psychology, knows a little bit, or is a therapist, doctor, and such. This mistrust, this fear of, for one, being vulnerable. You might look into my soul. You might psychoanalyze me, Right. But then there's also, I think, often a fear and apprehension because of feeling misunderstood because, and this is something that I'm learning even in real time, it is about relationship. It is about human connection. And I think that's why so many of you responded the way you did when you saw my review of High Ren. I was hit hard by that. I was crying along and rejoicing along as I was watching this movie video. And many of you were found comfort according to what I saw in the comments by the empathy that was being expressed now for me it wasn't it wasn't the show it was natural I it was heavy it was, I felt it because I could relate to it myself so having empathy for that topic was not hard but many of you responded to it because I think a lot of us long for others to understand we long for someone to do more than just sit there with a notepad we long for more than just someone to pacify us with medication and I think when there's this fear of oh you're just psychoanalyzing me putting me in a box right you're looking into the depths of my soul but you might use that against me or there's this fear of imbalance of power right you are looking into my soul I don't know what's going on with you now there's this fear of wait a minute I'm at your mercy then you have this whole debacle this whole struggle with people just, especially here in the West, being so quick to prescribe medication. And he even says it in the lyrics, and we'll talk about those in depth in just a moment. So don't go. It's this often just it numbs. Though medication has its place, and it's a gift at times, if it, we're so quick just to, okay, just take this. Not dealing with what's underneath. Nobody's being helped, and people end up feeling worse because they're numb. That's not a life. When you can't feel and you can't experience both joy and sadness in a balanced way, that's no life, right? People go from being so sad, feeling no joy, just deep despair and sadness, feeling grief to a very heavy degree, to now being on medication and feeling nothing at all. Neither of those things is living life to the fullest. Who wants to live like that? So, it's powerful to see how deep and how real Dax is de dealing with the topic of depression. This is a song that is very powerful, very, very powerful and way more than just, oh yeah, I feel sad sometimes. This is talking about real depression, like the depression, as I mentioned in the introduction, it's beyond just saying I'm depressed as in I'm sad a little bit. Depression is a real disorder that causes a lot of people serious agony and um, Okay, but I took notes because there were so many good things and I didn't want to keep pausing. The camera's everywhere, okay? In the end, with him ripping apart the paper, realizing this is a fake wall, a fake sky as he walks up the stairs, total reference to me to The Truman Show with Jim Carrey, 98 drama sci-fi movie. Awesome and powerful movie where, you know, he eventually realizes, the main character realizes that it's all just a large set. He's being watched by everybody. But the cameras everywhere, at first I thought, right, who are these people watching him, okay? This is just, his life's on display. And I could see both Dax relating to that as an artist that has grown very significantly, right, who's trying to impact and speak into other people's lives. But everybody has an opinion. I even experience it here a little bit on a much smaller scale, but I experience it where everybody and their mama has an opinion, right? And for the most part, people are kind. But then you find very odd comments in between that are either very ugly or very 
emotionally unintelligent, just like, what the heck? And sometimes it almost takes me a second to process. Am I going to respond? Maybe I shouldn't acknowledge it at all. What do I say? Sometimes I do respond. I try to respond with kindness. There's been times I have to like hold my tongue because people don't realize that, mm, you know, <laughs> I am Cuban and German. I try to be sweet, but ooh, um, y'all don't even know. <laughs> um, and so I have to bite my tongue sometimes. And sometimes I just say, you know what? I don't want to give that type of behavior, behavior at the time of day. But some of the comments have me amazed because I think to myself, bear with me. I think to myself, this can't be real. They can't seriously think this like the what? But then I look at some of the, the things that I've heard other people share about their lives. And it's like, no, this is for real. Dax is experiencing that on a much greater scale. So to, at first, when I saw cameras everywhere, I thought, is this a reflection on always being watched by everybody trying to make a difference, trying to share your life with the world, dealing with heavy and personal topics? but everybody's always watching. Then I thought to myself, it reminds me also of the movie Inside Out, where you have the different emotions in that little girl's brain as she transitions through her toddler age into childhood and young adulthood. You have the, the different feelings, anger, sadness, joy, and those different things. You have those core memories that are represented as these little marble balls in the brain. And so it's almost like her brain, her emotions are watching her from the inside out, from this monitor shuttle within the child's mind and consciousness. But as the music video progresses, you can tell this is some type of setup, right? So he's being watched, cameras everywhere, people communicating via walkie-talkie and headsets, watching where he's going, switching cameras as he leaves the house, right? The mailman showing up with a what feels like a very fake smile. And as Dax is singing about depression and that struggle, he's being handed a magazine that speaks of tri-therapy. And I think that too, I could see that being very relatable to many of you because there's this feeling when someone says, oh, just do therapy. It's, for one, it's hard to come by. Even just speaking to friends from Germany recently, I learned how it's gotten quite bad, according to what I understand. Let me know in the comments below. I live in the States now, so I'm not there every day to see what's going on. But I've learned that it's very hard to come by proper access. Many people pay people on a waiting list when it comes to getting therapy and support. And that's horrible and I can uh, imagine it's similar in many other countries and worse in certain places where people are not getting the support that they need the therapy the counseling and so when someone says I'll oh, just go ahead and try therapy there's a lot of other hoops to jump through it's not as simple as just find a therapist there's cost involved it's very expensive there's hoops to jump through with insurance if you have insurance and then you got to find someone you can relate to it's not the same when you just see someone who prescribes you medication that will numb you it's not the same if someone just sits there cold and objective just taking notes as if you're a project or a case number right people long for relationships people long for someone to weep and rejoice with them for someone to be in the suffering with them sometimes that can be much more impactful than someone sitting there informing you about your issues and sometimes even when I tell some of you have you tried therapy do you have someone to talk to I know it may seem very shallow because that's you need more than that and I wish I could help everybody and be a friend and just reach out to everybody or hug some of you guys and just hold you for a while because I think sometimes that's what people need this this community we're living in a very lonesome world the more social media has taken place the more antisocial we've become the more lonely we are behind our screens stuck in our homes it's 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 tragic so this idea of hey here's a magazine try therapy feels very superficial and if you've really struggled with depression if you really have struggled with anxiety and heartache and grief and pain many of you can relate to this it feels like yeah just another person saying hey go find some help and you're drowning right if you're drowning in the ocean surrounded by waves crashing in on you and someone says hey go grab the life ring where you don't even have strength left to reach out your arms well go ask for help and you you don't even have strength to, to breathe properly because you're dr drowning then it's also interesting to see how he's going through daily life, right? He waking up with a sigh, this this fitting, very fitting to what depression does to people. Just no hope, no desire to get up. He's going through daily life. He's being watched by all these cameras and uh, pushing people aside as they're trying to interview him and ask him questions. That too, to me, there's different ways to interpret that. On one hand, again, someone who's being watched by everyone. And that doesn't just go for someone famous like Dax. Many of you might be able to relate to that in the sense that you feel watched and like you have expectations put on you. 
regardless if you're a man and woman, it may look different depending on where you work and your family and life situation. But sometimes life feels like everybody's watching us. Everybody needs us. Some of the moms out there know that feeling very well. Even some of you dads who feel like, there's always expectations. The wife and the husband have expectations. The children have expectations. Your employees or your employer have expectations, right? There's expectations how you behave on the road, right? In your own car, even there, there's rules and expectations. Everybody's watching you. So you don't have to be famous to know that pressure. Then there was a reference, which was awesome because this was released really six months ago. There was a reference about not being a man. And we'll go through the lyrics in more detail in just a second. Stay with me. And I thought that's pretty cool that there's this little nod to the struggle of that men experience when it comes to emotions and feeling like they have to keep everything locked inside because they're afraid of being vulnerable, because they've been ridiculed when they did open up, because they feel like they're just going to make the burden heavier when they do share what's really going on. And it's sad to say that that even needs to be said, right? It's sad to say that our world and women, because men are living this, need to be reminded, oh, men think and feel too, right? I mean, a lot of times I think it's easy to think or know, well, yeah, men feel, right? Anger, frustration, right? That testosterone when they're in some type of sports game, competition, frustration. But just as much as we women wouldn't want to be boxed into a couple of emotions, oh, always crying, right? Or always bubbly or whatever, right? These stereotypes that are insulting to women to be boiled down to. The same goes for men though. And I don't think we realize how often that's the case. Men keep to themselves. A lot of men just go through the motions and there could be plenty of complaints, plenty of hurt, but you know, it's not talked about much. That's why I think that song to be a man is so fitting. And to have that little reference here about you ain't a man is like, wow, six months ago, you were already preparing us for this. And then in the end, him opening up that tapestry walking up the stairs it got lighter and brighter at first after the storm and I thought oh is this hope is this a symbol for horizon for hope on the horizon it's going to get better and there were comforting affirmations within the song which I also thought was powerful but then it turned out that he's going up the stairs realizes this sky is fake it's all just tapestry every Truman show like I'm being watched it's all just a setup and that is powerful because on one hand life can feel that way I feel when you're depressed when you're in your own mind you're caged you're boxed in you feel watched by everybody you feel like you're failing there's this sick cycle of shame and despair that when you realize wait a minute you know what I mean this is not reality this doesn't have to be my reality this isn't the truth that could be symbolic for ripping that apart we don't know what was behind that wall right um, he looks out we don't know what he sees right it could be an even harsher reality, it could be hope behind the scenes, but something has to give that fake reality that these, these systems we've set up in our mind have to come crumbling down. And sometimes things have to be shattered. Sometimes the glass has to be broken and the wallpaper has to come down for us to realize I don't have to live this life. I may have this diagnosis, but that is not who I am. You are not the things you have done. Do they impact you? Yes. Are there consequences for things that we've done and that have been done to us? Yes. Do they affect who we have become? Absolutely. But it is not who you are. You, my friend, are not what you have done. You are not your failures. You are not just the sum of your success, especially you men out there who have been told for so long that your worth is boiled down by how much money you make. I know that's what society teaches. And I could totally see that triggering serious existential fears that you don't talk to anybody about, that you don't complain about because you're a man and that's not a thing, right? You keep those emotions locked down. You just accept that that's the way it is. We all can learn from one another as human beings. And we women can learn a ton from men. One of the things that perhaps men can learn from women is don't be silent. Women will, many women, depending on where you're from, what country you're from, okay? But here in the West, more and more, women are going to speak up when something's unjust and wrong. Men, however, as I've seen in many of the comments, to, to be a man will just accept it and say, well, that's just how it is. Don't. Don't just accept it. I know it's going to take more for you than it would be for a woman. And I careful when, please hear me when I say that it still takes courage for a woman to be vulnerable and open her heart. Yes. But when a woman is emotional and complains about something or says, this bothers me, not too many people are shocked because that's what we women do. We're, 
we, we will communicate, we will express our feelings. Most people won't look at a woman and go, oh my gosh, she's crying, she's breaking down, right? There's more tolerance, I feel, for a woman having that emotional response. There's other expectations on women, okay? Other things that are really, really hard for women. Don't take my words and twist them, please. Women have their struggle, men have their struggle. But in that regards, emotions and speaking up and those things, at least here in the West, are not uncommon, Maybe that's a better word for women. For men, however, a man breaking down, a man crying, a man being very emotional, he'll be looked at as more feminine. He'll be maybe perceived and then ultimately respected differently. That's how it is in the Western society. And I would encourage you to not be afraid to speak up and say, this is what I want. Of course, it has to be done with wisdom. I understand you can't just go to anybody and everybody. You have to find wise counsel. And some of you have shared with me, you have good men that you can talk to, that you can confide. And I think that's powerful. We all need that guidance from a father and guidance from a mother. And I don't just mean our biological parents. I mean a mentor, people that can guide us, where we can learn from one another, depending on where we are at with our walk in life. But this struggle that many of you would know from personal experience of real depression is no small feat. It's no small thing. And, uh, there is hope. There's got to be hope because otherwise, what's the point? He says, I can't find myself. I get lost inside my brain. Beautiful way to start this, right? Straight to the to point. D depression is a heavy disorder and it is, to a degree, it can be chemical, yes, but it's more than just, oh, there's just a chemical imbalance, right? When to tell someone that, oh, it's just this, oh, it's just that. Sometimes also it helps to know where something comes from. That helps when it, we diagnose things. We understand the pain is my broken arm. Okay, now I can do something about it. But at the same time, when it comes to depression, because we can't see the scars as we could on a broken arm, it's hard to put in words. And when someone says, well, this is where it's coming from, and a therapist tries to explain to you what it is, that may only bring so much comfort, right? It initially might help to go, oh, okay, I'm not crazy. Oh, okay, I'm not alone. But what then? You're still lost inside. You're still struggling within your brain. So it's a brilliant way to start this and get straight to the point of where this issue resides. That being said, we're getting a little deep today. Even though it is a mental issue and it is a struggle within our brain, right? It's not a broken bone. It's something that we struggle with in our mind. Because it's not visible externally, it is a beast to overcome, to, to learn to live with and to, to battle because it's a daily thing. A broken arm would heal and eventually it's fine. Maybe there's some long-term effects, right? You have to maybe do some therapy depending on how bad the break was, but it will heal. With the brain, with matters of the brain, of the mind, of our, psych of our psyche, it takes daily decisions to get out of bed, daily decisions to keep choosing life. And that is hard because there are days when you just are tired of the days, days tired of choosing. You don't want to have to choose life anymore. You don't want to have to fight anymore. And so when you are at a place where you can't find yourself, that's so scary because we exist to be and to be known and to be seen. I think I might need help. I pushed all of them away. And that too is understandable and normal when you're hurting to remove yourself and to move into isolation. I can relate to that. It's a very, very lonely place, but it's so scary to reach out for help that it almost feels easier. And then you push people away and you find yourself lost. There's nothing I can change. When I'm by myself, I just pray for brighter days. Sometimes I sit and reminisce about the good times, wish I could get those back. Is that relatable to you? Comment below. I keep on running these races. Oh, and by the way, about that real quick, before we keep going, reminiscing back on the good old days, making special significant memories in our life can be great to counter our existential fears to find meaning in life. But sometimes reminiscing about something being good in the past and feeling like you've lost that and may never get it back almost reinforces that cycle of depression because it makes it feel it's this reminder of our mortality. It's this reminder of I'm never getting back to those childhood days where life was easier if someone's childhood was good. I'm never getting back to that place, right? I'm only headed downhill from here. And that's, that's just this cycle where you start spiraling and it just becomes despair. Wish I could get those days back. I keep on running these races that go in my mind and they go on these tracks, race, tracks, well, well put there. I'm not ready to erase all my memories, I fight depression and I let it get the best of me. 
There's nowhere to run, nowhere to go. See, that fight. Look around, there's liquor bottles on the floor, coping, trying to deal with this suffering in an unhealthy way. Filling up the space inside my heart and my home, drowning out these thoughts until they leave me alone. Right? So you're trying to drown it with substance. For some people, that could be alcohol or drugs. For other people, it's pornography. For other people, it's jumping from one relationship to the next. For others, it is self harm, right? All these different unhealthy ways that we're looking for love and for some peace in the wrong way. I can't find myself. I get lost inside my brain, think I might need help, but I pushed all of them away. And then it says, I took the cards they dealt, and there's nothing I can change. So when I'm by myself, I just pray for brighter days. These thoughts are draining all my energy. I try to tell them to God. They said, I'm going insane. And then they recommend therapy. And I go and talk to a man who's getting paid to explain. And see, that I think is significant here too. Someone who's getting paid to explain. Perhaps this little reference to the money issue, right? Therapy is very expensive, but also getting paid to explain. For many people, they view therapy and counseling as just someone that's going to sit there and explain things. And that's not what most people need. At first, perhaps, those who don't know what's going on, they may need the diagnosis. They may need someone to break it down into layman's terms, what the heck is going on in my body and in my mind. But after that, we don't need people to just explain. Even today, I was thinking, well, maybe in my videos, I should be more specific about what these different mental disorders and issues are and give more practical, you know, feedback and lessons. And in some videos, I might do that. I might, you know, I'm working on offering extra courses and materials even on Patreon and such. But sometimes I think just information is not what people need. We can Google information galore. And if it is accurate and not, you know, somehow polarized because of agenda, we can get our information if we have our sources right. How we can stimulate our mind galore in regards to info and feelings and opinions. But a lot of it won't make us feel better because there's something inside that needs to heal. They say you ain't a man when you're exposing your heart. See that reference to, to be a man. They say you, you're insane until it tears you apart. And then it cuts you so deep and they can tell by the scars, man. And then here it gets really powerful. I mean, the whole thing is powerful, but there is some important information right here. We can only see change when we accept who we are. Let me say that again. We can only see change when we accept who we are. That statement in itself is powerful because a lot of the struggle when it comes to illness, ailment, mental disorders, unhappiness is lack of acceptance. When we go through grief, and grief is not just when someone dies. Grief could be grieving your youth, grieving the fact that you're mortal. As silly as that sounds, it's a thing. Grieving a relationship breakup, grieving what you thought your life would look like, grieving the fact that you may never not have to deal with certain struggles, right? Depression is not something you can just wish away. It may be something you need to support for for the rest of your life be it through someone to talk to be it through medication there's things in life that will be an ongoing thing even with addiction many of you know this it's not something that will just be gone one day you will have to continually choose every day not to give in to certain temptations that in itself is is hard but we grieve all these different things and the final stage and I say final not in the sense of it being linear because grief is comes in waves and sometimes we revisit certain stages but a healthy place to reach at some point is acceptance and we can't really change if we don't accept it if I for example have something that I struggle with something that I tend to do a habit um let me give an example um Looking for affirmation externally, wanting people to make me feel like everything's fine, right? Maybe possibly stemming from feelings of abandonment, of rejection, um, an abusive parent, addiction in the family where you never know what's going to happen next. You feel on guard. You feel like you're not safe, right? And so you establish these habits of always looking outside. Are we good? Everything fine? Fear of being rejected, fear of abandonment. And a lot of that is becomes so internalized. This is one example that you start reacting from that place of always needing affirmation. Now, once in a while, it's nice to get that affirmation. But if that's the only way to find peace, it becomes this addiction. It becomes this drug, right? Tell me we're fine. Tell me we're still good. Tell me, you know, you've done nothing wrong. Tell me everything's okay. That person, if they always do that, 
though they think they're helping, at the end of the day, they might be enabling us because it's still just that fix, a couple of words of affirmation. Okay, I feel at peace again. Everything's fine in my world. Until two days later, I'm anxious again, thinking there's a threat around the corner. Again, it's nice to be affirmed. It's nice to receive compliments and to connect and communicate with our loved ones. But if we always need that, it enables us and it becomes this unhealthy pattern. And it will take accepting, wait a minute, I have this and this issue. This is where this comes from. I'm struggling with this. It will take accepting this person. These people around me will never be able to make me happy. It's not their job, nor can they. And coming to a place of accepting reality, what's really going on can bring change. Try to run from the shame and you will never get far. So he's really encouraging us to accept to stop running, deal with it. That's the hard part. When you're feeling depressed, when you're struggling, when you've been diagnosed with an ailment, so much of us, I think because of our desire to survive and our existential fears, wants to run away from it. These feelings are unpleasant and hard, but we have to stop running. Don't you bottle the pain and live your life in the dark. You're meant to break from those chains and shine as bright as a star. Powerful Dax, Don't you ever tell yourself that your depression is the reason you won't make it. Listen to this. I'm going to say it again. Don't you ever tell yourself. Let me say it a little sweeter. Some of this, the way I'm talking right now, might trigger some parental voices to some of uh, the inner children um, uh, amongst us, right? So let me not say it like you're in trouble. Don't you ever tell yourself that your depression is the reason you won't make it. Or that happiness is not in your cards. That right there. You are not your depression. You are not your mistakes. You are not your diagnosis, my friend. That is something you have. That is something you are dealing with. That is something that makes you a survivor. Because you are still breathing. You are here right now listening to this. You are stronger than you realize. You kept choosing life to get to this day. To listen to this video. You chose to, re- to respond to this or to watch this. You're still breathing right now. You've made a choice every minute of the day, even on days that were incredibly hard where you wanted to give up and it would have been easier just to be done, where you chose to stick around for yourself, for your loved ones, or maybe out of fear of what other, the alternative would be. But you stayed, you fought, you're fighting, you're still breathing. And you are not your depression. You are not your diagnosis. With our God, you can beat all the odds. Wow. This is powerful. Keep your faith and you'll never be lost and say, I can't find myself. So he's really, he's really dealing with depression in a very real way. But he's also giving us a remedy saying, stop bottling it up. Stop running away. With our God, you can beat the odds. There's hope. And faith is very powerful, putting our faith in God, believing there's someone greater that can, that is not affected by the brokenness of this world and who loves us unconditionally. But even for those of you who don't believe, who don't believe in God, I dare you to, to open your heart to the possibility of hope. Even if, you know, religion and the idea of God is like, I don't need that. Choose hope, choose life. You do not have to live all your life just suffering. Keep your faith. So that you will never be lost and say, I can't find myself. I get lost inside my brain. Dude, Dax. Okay, so, and what was cool here, he was singing, but also he was like, it was like a spoken word at times. Like he was rapping too. I'm really looking forward to seeing more and more of his work. The music video was outstanding. His singing voice is nice. I really like it. And it's fun to sing along to. It's just, this song is just naturally, you can just harmonize with. Oh my goodness. I feel like later on, I'm going to, I'm going to realize there's all these other things that I could have said. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below what this song means to you. Please choose life today, my friends. And what I mean by that is in what you say and what you watch, who you surround yourself with. Maybe you can confide in a friend today. Maybe you can seek some counseling. I hope you there's someone around you that really cares, that is willing to listen. You do not have to fight alone. Do not give up. You are so loved. You matter. The space you fill matters. This life you were given is worth living. All right, you guys. I will see you on the next ride. Ayo. 